to Architecting. I'm your host, Angela Mazzi. You made it. This is the landing pad for raw honesty about connecting your career with your purpose. I'm going to give you the tools you need to be an unapologetic advocate for yourself and others, because if you're here, You believe that the space we surround ourselves in matters and you're committed to project by project building a better world for all of us. If you're with me, let's get architecting. Hey, Bright Lights, Angela here and welcome, welcome, welcome back to architecting. You know, I love having you here in this community and I love hearing from you. Today, we are going to be talking about something that one of our listeners, Nikki, sent in as a question. And if you didn't know, absolutely, yes, you can email me at Angela at architectingpodcast.com or you can DM me on LinkedIn or on Instagram. I'm there at Architecting Podcast. And you can ask your question and I will answer it and explore the issues with you on the air. And this is a good one. And I think a lot of you are going to relate. Nikki says, the thrill is gone. I'm having a hard time staying motivated at work. I used to love this company, but now I feel like a cranky hermit who just wants to be left alone and stay at home. The office is too loud. The clients annoy me with their constant changes. And I'm starting to think that the CM on my current project is the son of Satan. Help me. Ouch. Nikki, this is definitely a sign that the thrill is gone. That halo effect that a lot of us have when we join a company and we're really excited about it does wear off even at the very best of companies, even the ones doing the most progressive stuff, because we start to take for granted the perks of the job and only see the negative things. But this reminded me of a TikTok trend that's been going around. It's sort of a relationship o meter the beige flag. For those of you that haven't heard of it, A beige flag is not quite a deal breaker like a red flag, like leave, run, run far, run fast. It is more of a, huh, don't love this. Huh, could be better. That sort of blah, you know, when you get that sense and it might be that something hits you as a little quirky or strange, like some of the things that are starting to annoy you at work, like the loud office environment or the indecisiveness of a client, etc. But it can also just be that you don't feel as engaged or excited anymore. And while beige flags are most often used in relationships that are of the romantic flavor, They really can apply to any kind of relationship. And I think it's really important that we understand our career as a series of relationships that we are having with our boss, our peers, our coworkers, others in our network, our clients. And when those relationships become transactional, they can start to feel really flat and empty. When they become transactional, we can also start to become really picky the same way we would if we were shopping for a new shirt. Mm, I don't like that one. Mm, I like that one, but it doesn't come in colors I like. Mm, It doesn't fit perfect. We can talk ourselves out of buying something because it's transactional versus seeing all the ways that a particular shirt might meet our needs more than it doesn't meet our needs. So when we're in the workplace, those beige flags are really kind of that cause for pause. They're our ability to step back and to say, my career needs a tune-up. Do you need to leave your current company or can we make it work out there? 
That's not a question I can answer right now, but I will say step one, when you see all these beige flags, is to look in the mirror because like so many issues that we explore here in architecting, clarity and purpose are at the root of everything. If you know what you want, if you are looking for ways to live your purpose, then you have a much better way of seeing whether your present circumstances are the best environment for doing that or not. You're able to ask the right questions, to look for the right opportunities, to pursue the right things with your limited time and energy. Let's go through some of the signs that you've been waving the beige flag at work. Number one is monotony. Is one day blending into another and it kind of feels like same shit, different day? You don't wake up in the morning and feel excited about going to work. You're more fixated on what you might be doing after work or where you might go to lunch or how tired you feel that day instead of all the things you get to do. And they feel more like things you have to do and they don't feel particularly inspiring. If you're starting to feel that monotony about your work, that's a sign of a beige flag. Lack of engagement is another big sign. When things just don't seem worth the energy, you know, in the past you might have seen something like a rendering style and thought, you know, we could express this concept so much clearer if we only did this and you would do things on your own unprompted and you would be initiating new ideas and innovation and bringing ideas to the team, bringing ideas to your boss. And now you just don't feel like it's worth the time or the energy because maybe you haven't seen those past efforts pay off. So you kind of feel yourself being a little more withdrawn, a little more passive, maybe tending to do the minimum rather than looking for ways that you can be an agent of change. Another sign is caution starting to rule your action. If you feel like you're in an environment where the risk is never worth the reward, you're always being told no, or people say they'll think about an idea, but then you feel like it never really goes anywhere. And you start to feel like they're being so cautious about change that there's no way that the company is going to do anything. And that can be really deflating and cause inertia to set in. Finally, are you finding yourself saying, I'm too busy? You're starting to reprioritize away from things related to your career. So you're starting to maybe focus more on issues in your personal life and maybe start to rank them a different priority and therefore start to feel like work isn't worth the amount of effort you had previously been putting in. You're not as excited about socializing with your coworkers or company events. You can maybe even in these situations get a little bit defensive or overly sensitive to being asked to do too much because you haven't seen the payoff. So now you're skeptical of anyone who's asking you to go above and beyond. If you are feeling any of those, what's happening here is you're disengaging. For anyone who is a firm owner or in leadership, employee engagement is number one as the thing we need to be doing as a company because our employees are our biggest asset. They are our biggest expense. If they are not engaged, they are not productive. They are highly likely to move on to another firm and they are just not bringing any energy or innovation and a company that 
does not evolve is going to stagnate. So this is a big issue and it's a valid concern. And I'm so glad, Nikki, that you brought this forward because I think a lot of us are still dealing with the trauma of the pandemic, even though it's been a few years, even though everybody's open for business again and masks are not mandatory, all that good stuff. I think so many of us have seen so much of a disruption of normal that we're never going to go back to the way things were, but we're having that kind of growing pains associated with what does it all mean? And these can feel like existential questions. And when we're in that kind of existential crisis of how do I feel like my life and my work have meaning, it's really easy for the day-to-day workings of work to just not feel meaningful at all anymore. It just feels like a bunch of background chatter. How can we fix it? Because the beige flag effect, this is the beginning of the end, right? It doesn't mean all hope is lost. It just means that there are some real concerns here and we need to try to fix it. Look for ways to become better aligned again with your purpose. So if the work you're doing is not doing it for you, what else can you do? Can you look for other professional development opportunities that are available through professional organizations or volunteer work? Can you ask for a different role on a project? Can you ask for opportunities to study an issue that really excites you? You are an owner or a leader. Make sure that you are acknowledging the effort that people put in, that you let them know that you see them, that you say thank you, that you take the time after a meeting or after a deadline to share one-on-one with someone as well as with the team as a whole what they did really well and maybe some of the risks that the team took that paid off that are going to now be carried forward into future projects show people how they are having an impact that goes such a long way to motivating them and inspiring and energizing them. Now, if you're saying, well, I'm the employee and this is not happening for me, what can you do? Well, it doesn't mean that your boss is an ingrate and doesn't appreciate or value you. It may just be that they themselves are so stressed out, and we talk about this a lot as a stressless success kind of an issue. When we are totally stressed out, we don't celebrate the wins. We're constantly chasing the external validation, the next milestone. We've all been under a lot of stress lately, so maybe that is what is going on with your leadership is that they are so focused on what's next on their heaped on plate that they are not celebrating the win. So what can you do? Suggest a team meeting or bring in donuts or suggest a happy hour or a little campfire where Everyone can kind of loosen up and have a fun experience together. And maybe you could generate that list of what you appreciated about the opportunities to work on the project. You could take a little bit of initiative here to try to bring up that recognition and appreciation element. What else can we do when that beige flag starts to wave? Well, checking in often is really important. So if you are a leader, make sure that you don't just talk to the team as a whole, but that you give everyone one-on-one attention. Think of them as your family. If you had four kids, you would take the time to do individual activities with all of them, as well as things that involve the whole family. 
And it's the same with your team. You need to break out time with individual people. You need to ask them how they're doing, focus on their well being. Talk to them about the progress they're making towards things that are important to them, whether those are formally written goals for their career or just other issues going on in their life, other life milestones. Maybe they're going through something like some family issues, sickness in the family, death in the family, having to move, other things that can be causing stress in their life or trauma. And remember, trauma. It's not always big T trauma, like the really horrible cataclysmic life event. There can be little T traumas, smaller things, but that still throw us off rhythm and off balance. And when we're dealing with that, it's hard to have the energy and focus to care about things like whether a client wanted glass at the transaction counter or a bigger surface to transact. I mean, these things start to feel almost laughable, even though they're important to the project. Are your employees having to deal too much with these very, very in the weeds things that don't have a lot of satisfaction and meaning associated with them versus things that could feel more impactful, that could help them feel more relevant and make them feel like focusing on their goals again can matter, that they can shift gears like that. It is really important because when we show people that we see them, that we appreciate them, when they get chances to do work that feels meaningful, and I really have to emphasize that meaningful, it is a game changer. A lot of times, especially on bigger projects, depending on the phases that they're in, you may go several months where everything is in the weeds. In those times, you need to look for ways to kind of pop up above the surface there and look at things from a higher level and weave back in those opportunities for meaningfulness. Otherwise, it's very easy to feel burned out. Finally, think about the work environment. We all want to work in an energized atmosphere. We want to feel comfortable dialoguing with our coworkers. We want to have time for downtime where we're just laughing and talking. But we also need that quiet, focused time. Pay attention to whether the environment of the workplace is offering that. And if it isn't, Think about, could you move? Could you spend a little time in a conference room or in a quiet corner somewhere? Are there some breakout spaces? What else can be made available or can you seek out on your own that's going to give you that quiet focus time that you might really be craving, especially when we start working from home, we have a very different dynamic and having to come into the office again can be very jarring contrast between the two work environments. Nikki, you got a lot of food for thought here to really help you figure out what's going on, why the thrill is gone, and what proactive steps that you can take to bring it on back. This is really the litmus test that employers are facing today. They need to be sensitive to these issues. They need to listen when their staff brings these issues forward. Should you stay or should you go when the thrill is gone? It really depends on whether you, once you've taken the time to be introspective, to get that clarity, to understand what you're passionate about, and to make a little bit of effort to have the hard talk, ask the questions you need to ask, ask for the things you need, whether it's in terms of accommodations or opportunities, what do you hear back? 
And if what you hear back sounds like authentic concern and a genuine willingness to consider your ideas and you see movement in terms of opportunities to do meaningful work, gold star, you should stay. This is a good environment. If you feel dismissed or brushed off or made wrong, well, then you might want to reconsider and make sure that you take these same concerns and these same asks into any other interviews that you have so that you have a sense of whether or not a prospective employer is going to be the right place for you. Remember to be clear, remember to ask, and remember to create a work plan so that both you and your employer have some accountability about expectations and what kind of timelines to expect for things to happen. Good luck, Nikki, and I know this is a topic that so many of you are dealing with, so I would love to hear your own thoughts where are you finding beige flags in your workplace? What have you tried to do? What are you going to do after listening to this episode? How can you shift that energy so that you feel like your workday has a much higher percentage of get to do moments versus have to do moments? Love to hear all of that. Remember, you can DM me on Instagram. You can post your thoughts on Instagram and tag me at Architecting Podcast. You can also do the same on LinkedIn at Architecting. And you can email me directly, Angela at ArchitectingPodcast.com. I love hearing from you. Just like Nikki, you too could get some really valuable and targeted career coaching just by reaching out with your question. Remember also to share this podcast with others who could benefit from this information. Architecting is a community that is all about lifting up one another, collaborating and networking. If you want to help even more with that effort, like, rate, and review this podcast. It really does help the algorithms to show this podcast in searches. So people who are looking for exactly this kind of information can find it and hopefully get the relief that they need. All right, everyone. Love you so much. Take care, and I will see you next time. you for listening. You made it all the way to the end of the episode, which means you are committed to making yourself a priority so you can be empowered to do the work you were called to do in the world. How amazing is that? If you would like even more content just like this, please remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I would so appreciate it if you left an honest review too. Hey, I want you to know I'm here for you beyond the boundaries of this podcast. You can follow me on social media at Architecting Podcast or visit architectingpodcast.com to download some great free resources. Take care, everyone, and stay inspired. Mm-hmm.